So I'm going to go through all of the details of what I did and uh, tell you the story behind it all. I'll explain why quant tools are perfect for election forecasting. Now, I'm sure a lot of things I'm going to talk about here are the sort of things that, that uh, pollsters do all the time, uh, but I want to make connections and par draw parallels with quantitative finance. One of the key things that I'm going to talk about is Jensen's inequality. Jensen's inequality, a very important mathematical thing that, that all quants know about. Uh, and this is the one of the reasons why uh, turning percentages forecast national polls, you know, Conservatives 34%, Labour 33%, etc., turning that into number of seats is difficult. One of the reasons for that is because of a thing called Jensen's inequality. I'm also going to throw in lots of common sense, I think, and what I call grown-up modelling. This, what we're trying to do here has two aspects to it, at least. Uh, one is the mathematical modelling side of things, and the other is the statistics side of things. And part of the, um, the mathematical modelling is knowing exactly what you're trying to model, know what, what is easy to model, what is completely pointless in modelling. That's what I mean by grown-up modelling. And although I may not be the world's greatest st statistician, I'm definitely in the Premier League when it comes to mathematical modelling. And one of the useful tools that we're going to use a lot is uh, transition matrices. So you'll see how I apply transition matrices, again, which we use a lot in quant finance, for example, change of credit rating. We'll see how we use this in, um, in election forecasting. The results I got, first of all, um, I've, I've, I've got, on the next slide, I'm going to show you the, the, the 2010 results. I'm going to show you what YouGov, one of the um, polling companies, uh, had, what my forecasts were and also what the final outcome was. And you'll see that my results are vastly different from, from YouGov. There are, there are lots of other polling companies. I, before writing this lecture, which has happened very, uh, it's obviously it's happened quite hurriedly, I did have a quick look to find what other people had been predicting. But it seems like quite a lot of them have disappeared from their websites, should we say. Uh, so I, YouGov was the easiest one to find. And the key thing that I had, the, my, my results were different from everybody else's that I could find, was that I had the Conservatives doing much, much better and Lib Dems basically completely falling off a cliff. This is what I got. So here's 2010. These, these are different parties, Conservatives, Labour, Lib Dem, UK Green, SNP, the various Northern Ireland parties, Plaid Cymru, uh, YouGov and... Mine and the actual one thing to watch out for is I've only got 649 seats. And there's an averaging process right at the end, so there's, there's a rounding error in mine. Uh, so you go, for example, had 284. The actual was 331. I had 321. So I had very, very close to a conservative, an outright conservative majority. Uh, the YouGov had Labour on 263. I had 243, and they were actually 232. So I was only nine away. Oh, sorry, 11 away from that. Lib Dem, this is, they used to have 57. YouGov had them on 31. I had them on 4. The actual result was 8. So that was one of the things that, you can imagine, it's Monday night. I've got to put, put my bets on, and my numbers are completely different from everybody else's. UKIP on 0, Greens, SNP, etc. These I'll explain about, uh, these These. I shall explain how I treated those separately in a second. OK, so why is this a difficult exercise? Um, I've said this already, but I'll go into some, a little bit more detail now. First of all, the nonlinearity as I've mentioned. It's worth mentioning this a, a few times. You can't go from the pre-election poll, the national polls, the percentages of how many people will vote for each party to a number of seats directly. Uh, that's why forecasting is difficult, that's why forecasting is fun, that's also why if you can do it well it, and you place bets correctly, then it, is, um, it can be profitable. And I will co come back again to explain about nonlinearity yet again in a second. But let's, this is no harder than valuing CDOs and MBSs, mortgage-backed securities, CDOs. These, these are far more complex, actually, than election forecasting. And we, this is the sort of thing we value these things all the time.